helmets on and away we go. Only these speed demons aren't sports cars or even motorbikes. They're made up of PMDs or personal mobility devices, such as e-scooters. I'm here at the karting arena to watch DXS Cross Club. They are the first club in Asia to organize and race in off-road and track races. And guess what? They're training right now. Dane Saleh is the man in charge. He started DSX in 2016 when PMDs first made their appearances on Singapore's streets. But you know what? These PMDs look a bit different. I don't have an e-scooter, but these don't look like the ones I see on the streets. Nope, they are not. They are a modified scooters meant for our races in private venues and uh -huh. leashes. It's more like an enhancement, especially on braking systems and, of course, the balancing of the scooters itself. Right. So how fast can these go? These kind of scooters, especially on private track where we use, it can achieve up to about 90 kilometers. 90 kilometers? 90 kilometers, yes. <sighs> but we doesn't ride on the roads. We held all the race in Malaysia, uh, go-kart track race. And I do teach all the guys regarding safeties on tracks as well. Is it actually legal to modify these scooters? It's not illegal to modify your scooter, but it's illegal to ride on a path or on a road in Singapore. We always go on a private area in Malaysia. So Malaysia is the most area that we always have events. And who modifies these bikes for you? Our club members has a shop which we do a lot of so-called modifications. When you think of PMDs, you'd probably think a quick way to get to work, food delivered to your doorstep, and of late, this. Fires. In 2018, there were 52 cases of PMD-related fires. But we've overshot that figure in just the first half of the year. Between January and June, there were 54 incidents. That's almost 10 a month. In this episode, I want to find out if people modifying their e-scooters could be one reason why we're seeing such a huge explosion in PMD-related fires. To get to the bottom of this, I want to see for myself how a PMD is modified. Danes brought me to DSX's modifier-in-chief. He did. He did all the basically modification for DSX. Faisal Khalid takes garden variety PMDs and turns them into modded monsters that can hit speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. I really want to know how you make these scooters go so fast. Well, um, there are a few fundamental things which they do it. Uh, first the battery, then the controller and then motor. How much does it cost then? To put original and good parts, um, it's about $1,500 to $2,000. Because what we use are all original parts, for safety reasons, of, of course. If we use cheap products, it could not guarantee the system, so tendency of caught fire is imminent. So if I want to modify my bike, can I bring it here? We don't do modifications. We only do repairs, those wear and tear stuff, yes, we do. But if DSX, Members come over and uh, want to do their upgrades, modification, yes. Because each and every one, we know what is their aim, and, uh, what they do. And we also have the schedule of what races are coming up. So who else can I go to then? You can look for maybe a Voidex scientist. What is a Void Deck Scientist? <laughs> this is such a bizarre term. Void Deck Scientist. Can you, okay. What does that mean? Uh, basically, there are a lot of... Uh, home business. One of the issues of, of sending over to like home base repairs to do up the modification is big possibility they don't really understand what they're doing. So what makes you guys experts compared to the void deck scientists? Okay, uh, basically we are experienced technicians who are actually trained for years. But all my years, my team and my clubs, our scooters never caught any fires before. For now, owning a modified bike is not illegal. 
so long as it weighs no more than 20 kilograms, is less than 70 centimeters wide, and its speed is capped at 25 kilometers per hour. Bust any of those limits and you cannot ride them on our public paths. Faisal told me that I could get a PMD modified right at the source, the retailers. So I'm at Mobot, one of the biggest and oldest PMD distributors in Singapore. I'm meeting Chu Boon He, Mobot's general manager, to see if Faisal's story checks out. Well, I heard that if I purchase an e-scooter, hmm. I can get it modified at a retailer. Is that true? I would say that is true prior to 1st July 2019. But if you're talking about now, uh, or talking about after 1st July 2019, the answer is no. So who are these people that request for modifications? Okay, most of the requests actually comes from um, customers who are doing food delivery. They actually want to increase the distance that the e-scooter can actually travel. Because the longer the distance they can travel, means the longer hours they can actually work. So most food delivery riders, they prefer something that can travel 70 kilometers or even 80 kilometers per full charge. Prior to July this year, retailers helped customers, often food delivery riders, modify their PMDs. The PMDs were modified to last longer between charging. Is this why bikes are blowing up all around us? It is estimated that there are 90,000 PMDs in Singapore, a fourfold increase from just two years ago. But with a rise in their numbers, it's come with a spike in PMD related fires, such as the recent fire that happened right here in Ang Mo Kio. I'm on a mission to find out why e scooters are catching fire so often these days. So far, I've discovered that modifying these machines is pretty common, especially among food delivery riders. So I've reached out to a few of them. I finally managed to find two who would speak to me, provided I don't reveal their identities. So, did you modify your bike? I used to have modified scooters. If I modify my scooter, it's a better battery, uh, I can work longer hours, uh, with a better motor I can uh, you know, ride faster, so more money. Uh. And is this um, common among a lot of delivery riders? Quite common, uh. very common. Uh. How much of a difference did it make to you in terms of your earnings then? Uh, it really makes a lot of difference. When I used that uh, modern scooter, I really used to earn about 150 a day. But if you have a bigger battery, you can earn a double amount or triple the amount a day. Then how did you get your bike modified? Find all these services online. Uh, carousel, if you really have to go to uh, Carousel. Yeah, just like, do a simple search and you can really find so many of these services. Wow, just like that. Yeah. Okay. A quick search online shows me he's right. There are over 50 listings for modification services. They say they can make my scooter go faster, increase its mileage and battery capacity, anything for a price. It is a virtual cottage industry that will trick out my PMD however I want. I contact one guy and ask him if he will modify my bike's battery. He agrees without hesitation. That was frighteningly easy and cheap. I just have to send in my off-the-shelf PMD in for 250 bucks and I'll get it souped up in just two short days. Two days later, it's finally here. My e-scooter has now been modified to have an extra battery. So I've just got my modified PMD. It pretty much looks exactly the same except for this, as you can see, black pouch here inside is where the batteries are kept. Now, this PMD can travel at 40 kilometers per charge. That is twice its original battery. But if I just turn my PMD into a ticking time bomb. 
I'm about to find out. Here. This lab studies anything that comes with a battery. Phones, laptops, power banks, and PMDs. Professor Subod runs things around here. He's going to take a look at my modified PMD and tell me if my move to modify made it a fire hazard. So I want mm. to know if I've turned my bike into a ticking time bomb. Right. One really needs to do a clear inspection of how the wiring of the battery pack has been done and how the interconnection between the battery pack and the battery management system has been arranged. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this battery is really a 48 volt battery and um, doesn't say very clearly you know, whether it is certified or not and what the manufacturing uh, sources were. So that itself is the, is the first concern, whether the battery has been sourced from a, from a reliable company. Other possibility which also exists is that the battery which has been installed is a mismatch with the battery management system. Right. The battery becomes too hot and the, the heat in the battery reaches a critical point where it cannot be reversed and it reaches into a catastrophic failure where the battery can catch fire. Can you explain to me the function of the battery management system? Sure. So the battery management system controls the voltage and the current that is supplied to the battery. So the battery can be fully recharged and it will cut off when fully charged. Yeah. If you overcharge the battery, then of course you're exposing yourself to a reliability risk, including fire. It seems quite heavy. So what happens if an incompatible battery was installed? I'm about to find out. Professor Subod's team will deliberately crank up the voltage supply to my modified bike and I'll be viewing the temperature changes through a thermal imager. So we're going to do the test now? Uh, yeah, yeah. This camera is in uh, wireless mode. It's... We want some distance between ourselves and the battery. Oh, I okay, see. Yeah, so, so obviously, we don't want to overcharge. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to risk it exploding in our face. Yeah. We can also control the power supply from, from this, this, this laptop as well. Mm -hmm. The maximum voltage capacity of my battery is 48 volts and I can see that we are beginning to push that limit. It's turning really yeah. orange. Yeah, yeah. so that's... It, it gets, it, the contrast, the greater the contrast, the higher the temperature. Basically, the more orange it is, the, the, the more you should be worried about it. If you look at the top end of the scale, it's 28.7. Mm -hmm. But as we test, this, this temperature is going to increase to like 30, maybe 40. That's, that's uh, roughly when you should be really stay away. Oh, wow. <laughs> but my battery pack is really, really charging up right now. I mean, it's like almost turning red. It is a very danger for right now. This is what is happening inside my PMD. The lithium ion battery which powers the PMD stores a lot of energy in a very small space. It has four parts. The anode, the cathode, a highly flammable liquid electrolyte solution and a very thin separator in the middle. When the voltage was turned up, the battery started heating up until a point where the separator breaks down, creating a thermal runway. The temperature inside the battery rises and rises and ignites the flammable electrolyte. And boom! Okay, so this is what happens when you modify your battery. You overheat the battery itself, you degrade its life, and of course, you put, um, you increase the risk of fire yeah, and, and, and battery explosions. Okay, so can this happen to any scooter? Yes, it can happen to any scooter. If, if you don't charge properly or if you can modify too much, it can hamper the whole battery system. So it's not just modifications, but also how I charge my PMD that can put it at risk of catching fire. Is the convenience of PMDs really worth the risk to our lives?
PMDs have been behind fires around the island. I've discovered that it's not just modified bikes that are the problem. All PMDs can burst into flames if you charge them too much, too soon, or with a cheap charger. To address the risk of fires, authorities have introduced a certification system. All PMDs must comply with the UL2272 safety certification by July 2020. It is an international safety regime which requires PMDs brought into Singapore to pass a stringent set of tests before they can be sold. The authorities have even gone so far as to offer $100 to dispose of uncertified PMDs. And there's a lot of them. More than 90% of PMDs currently in use are not certified. And if we're going to be careless about how we use e-scooters, the risks are even higher. And I'm not just talking about modifications. My producer just sent me this. This does not look safe to me. This bike is left charging in a void deck and the charger looks dodgy. What if it caught on fire in a public place? And online, I found much more scary pictures of people playing with fire. 95% of us live in apartment buildings. So it makes me wonder, if a PMD catches fire in my neighbor's flat, how quickly will it spread to mine? Stage one is when heat, oxygen and a fuel combine to produce a flame. Putting out the fire or escaping is easiest at this stage. The flames are small and aren't widespread. Stage two is when the fire grows, aided by surrounding flammable materials. Stage three, called the flashover, an almost simultaneous ignition of every single exposed combustible material in the vicinity. Temperatures can reach up to 1,200 degrees Celsius. At this hottest stage of the fire, rescue is almost futile. All this can happen in under five minutes. Five minutes. That's all it would take for a PMD to start a blaze that could take out an entire apartment. So how can I protect myself? Dr Tan Yok Lin has spent the last 20 years studying about fires and how fires spread. I want him to show me how I can stay safe if I own a PMD. So I'm bringing him to a typical three-room flat. Okay, Dr Tan, but this looks like a normal power strip, you know, where I charge my handphones every day. So why is this a fire hazard when charging my PMD here in, in this area? The fire hazards can be related to the sources of ignition or the presence of combustible materials around this area. Would this newspaper here be considered combustible? Yes, right. in, including the uh, stuff here made of uh, uh, wooden mm -hmm. materials. It makes the spreading of fire much easier. For instance, you could charge it somewhere here. Ah, okay. And bearing in mind, when you uh, connect the plug to the socket here, uh, you have to make sure that it's properly connected. Mm. Because if it's not, then you can also have a fire risk mm -hmm. from overheating. So I know a lot of PMD users charge their PMDs in the kitchen. Is it alright if we go check out the kitchen? Okay, let's go. Okay. So if one is charging the PMD using this power strip, and if the he places the uh, PMD here, you can see that if the PMD catches fire, it can easily spread to this uh, combustible materials here. So that's the hazard for the people who are living here. And if they are sleeping and this fire occurs, they may not know about the fire until it is already too late. Wow, when you put it all together, this is actually really scary. 
So I've learned quite a few things here. Number one, do not get your bike modified by a Void Deck scientist. Number two, if you can, switch to a UL2272 certified PMD ASAP. And of course, as important as everything else, be smart about how and where you charge your PMDs because one sloppy mistake could cause a fire to break out in your home.